Physics is an amazing subject to study at A-level. It's blooming hard, but learning physics will help explain the world around you, from unimaginably large things such as the universe and space to the fundamental building blocks of the world around us, including subatomic particles and radiation. Physics underpins chemistry and biology, and arguably is the most interesting science of them all, when learnt well, even if it isn't taught well. So this video is for all those gritty students who are taking the step on learning physics to the deeper and more interesting level at high school, particularly for those of you who are beginning your A-levels. Now I think there are three main parts to doing well in physics. Number one, have the correct resources to learn. Number two, be good at a bit of math and practice calculating. And number three, know your definitions. So let's talk through these three key points quickly to help you get the best idea of how you can smash your time learning physics and hopefully continue something along that path whilst at university. Now for some background, I'm just a mere medical student at Cambridge, so I didn't study physics to a higher level other than taking a few physics modules for my engineering intercalation. However, although it was hard, I enjoyed physics so much during my school years that I'm making these videos to help those of you who are going through the same journey as me do better in the subject and get the grades that really reflect upon the passion you have for the subject. So the first thing is having the correct study resources. You've got to find a few resources that'll help you understand all of the principles in a variety of different ways. Even for the most complex of physics topics, if you read the textbook, read a student support guide, watch a YouTube tutorial, and do some practice papers, then generally learning about this one topic in four different ways will help you understand it. And I promise with time and this approach, you will. So the things to dig out are your official physics textbook by your exam board, few student support guides that are specific to your exam board. Now these student support guides are really useful because they are distilled versions of your textbook. They don't contain all of the extra explanations and the extra sort of bits of context that the wider, thicker textbook has. And so these are really useful. Number three, find a few good YouTube channels that really help you understand physics content. So I do recommend that you spend half an hour or so digging through YouTube, finding a few really useful channels that explain the topics that you will cover to the right depth, but also in the right manner that works for you. The fourth resource that you should get in place now are notes and past papers. I had a fantastically simple website called Physics and Maths Tutor. And just as a disclaimer, this video isn't sponsored, but I found Physics and Maths Tutor so useful when I use it that I recommend you use it too. They've taken the past papers and for some exam boards, they've broken it up into topics only questions. And so for example, if you do mechanics questions, then you can find all of the AQA mechanics questions in one document with the answers in another document, which means once you've learned the topics of mechanics, you can then spend a good half day going through all the different question types and understanding how to get the questions in the exam correct. On the website, I also found fantastically useful a few summary notes that were uploaded on there, but I also found another website called fizzbot.net that was super useful because it had all of the important equations that I needed for my course. So like I found websites that contain notes and that contain summarized portions of my physics courses, you need to do some work and find websites that cater specifically for your courses. Now when going through the textbooks, the student support guides, or even online notes that you found, make sure you're not just reading it. Always have some pen and paper on you whilst doing that so you can jot notes down. This makes the process of reading far more engaging. And once you read through all of these different resources three, four times over the duration of your course, whilst also making and jotting notes, then trust me, a lot of it will be in your head without you even knowing. So when you do do past paper questions, you'll be like, oh wait, I do remember reading that in the textbook and this must be the answer because I've written it out three, four times. I'm not saying write out the whole textbook, but the key points, the key equations, the key definitions, just jot them down each time you read it just to hardwire it into your brain. Imagine you've got a soldering iron, imagine your brain's a circuit, hardwire it right in there. Now on the next really important topic of calculation practice, a lot of physics depends on the application of equations. For A-level, you do need to know how to derive certain equations. And come on guys, derivations aren't really too hard. It's just a matter of five, six different steps. And within sort of 10, 15 minutes, you could probably memorize those five, six different steps. So I really suggest that you sit down and sacrifice some time to put to memory some of the equations and the proofs for these equations. They really aren't that hard and it just requires a bit of time and discipline. When it comes to all these equations and calculations, you also need to become very familiar with rearranging equations, but also finding the correct unit once you've rearranged a certain equation. Number crunching and manipulating equations only comes with practice. If you can work out what equations to use, 
when to use them, and what numbers to draw from the question and plug into your equation to then get out the answers, then trust me, you'll be on track to get the top grades at A-level, or even GCSE for that matter. Now, a lot of you might say, yes, yeah, Sen, um, you're saying all of this, but like calculations are hard, and even the mark scheme doesn't make sense sometimes just reading through it step by step. Well, if that's the case, you go online and you watch a few work solutions for that specific topic. The sorts of calculations that you guys get in A-level physics, regardless of the course, they're very, very common. It really isn't like you're doing groundbreaking research where the answer to your question hasn't yet been worked out. So literally go on YouTube if you don't understand the calculation, search it up, and you know, with a few clicks, you'll find some good explanations of the calculation type. Straight after that, after you watch a few, try and do the calculation yourself and see if you can understand the mark scheme steps. Then later on, try and do a few questions yourself without the mark scheme and make sure you're getting the correct answer. This is how you get good at calculations. And really guys, believe me on this, if you can master calculations and equations and rearranging them and manipulating them, that is arguably a good third of getting that top grade in physics. The last big important thing about physics to really get your head around is definitions. Definitions get you a lot of easy marks in physics, both directly and indirectly. Sometimes the question might be really easy and will simply require you to define a word or a phrase and come on guys, it's like free marks. Spending 10 minutes to memorize a definition to then get a good five, six marks guaranteed in the exam, that's like picking cherries off trees, it's so easy. Next thing is that a lot of the easy questions depend on the application of certain definitions such as knowing the definition of what a beta particle is or what you know pair production is that sort of stuff is very easy and just memorizing the definition with the specifics of the definition included, then you're making your life a lot easier. And again, definitions don't require a lot of mind boggling understanding. They just require you to look at the word, look at the definition, maybe look at a diagram and just rote learn it. And like that, do that for all the definitions in your course and that'll be one step further to getting those top grades attainable. In my opinion, physics is one of those things that are truly fascinating when you learn them. But to really be fascinated by it, you need to learn it properly. And just for those of you out there who might be struggling with not the best of teaching during your school years for physics, get through it guys. You need to find your own motivation, you need to find your own interests in physics and let that drive you to go back home and even if your classes aren't useful, to make your own time useful and to learn physics to the level that it deserves. So as always, if you have any questions then comment down below or message me on Instagram. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you really liked it, please do subscribe. I'm trying to get to 13,000 subscribers by October. So let's make it happen, guys. Let's set a goal. Last but not least, if you do subscribe, please hit the bell icon so you can keep up to date with all my medical studies, but also my fun revision videos that I make here and there. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys soon in the next video. Cheerio.